Good morning and welcome to this act of worship that marks the beginning of Refugee Week on Sunday the 20th of June. So let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Thanks be to God. The Gospel lesson for today is taken from Mark chapter 4, reading from verse 34 to verse 41. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, as the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was dead calm. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Thanks be to God for his word. St Mark, as we've heard in his Gospel passage for today, graphically describes the perils of being on the water in a small boat when the weather changes and you become engulfed in a storm. He writes, a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat as the boat was already being swamped, but he, Jesus, was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? What struck me so powerfully this past week in preparing for today's service was just how apt this set lectionary passage is for the first Sunday in Refugee Week. We know that the crossing of borders is a hot potato of a contemporary issue. It's one in which there are those vocal commentators who seek to make political gain and capital from it, who use the plight of others to push their own agendas, often ignoring facts, distorting figures and using highly flammable and toxic language to boot. But the truth is that despite what some would want to claim, no one really chooses to be a refugee. However, dangers to life force people to move. Each year, up to one billion people cross a border. Every two seconds, a person is forced to flee for safety. Every day, 44,000 more people are driven from their homes. And as we reflect on all of this, we are conscious that many disparate people take treacherous journeys on unseaworthy boats and thousands perish from the way. Indeed, more than 1,200 people died in the Mediterranean Sea alone in 2020. I wonder how desperate must you be to risk your own life as well as the lives of your children, as you flee from violence, persecution and warfare. As a family, we know something about the cost of leaving everything behind, of fleeing for your life and seeking sanctuary and safety in a strange country, where your own native language is not spoken or understood, to become someone who is labelled and who is different and is seen as being other. And the waves beat into the boat, as the boat was already being swamped. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, 
do not care that we are perishing. In his post for the Methodist blog Theology Everywhere, the Reverend Stephen Wrigley this past Monday reminded us that it's now 400 years since John Donne, the celebrated poet and preacher, was appointed Dean of St Paul's Cathedral in 1621. Perhaps Donne's most famous passage, albeit in the gendered language of his time, is No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manner of thy friends or thine own were. These words, of course, remind us of our interconnectedness and how we are all part of one family, of one people, something that Refugee Week seeks to bring to the fore so that we do not forget. In 1962, President J. F. Kennedy told America that it should complement its Declaration of Independence with a global declaration of interdependence. We cannot distance ourselves from the plight of those who have become refugees and say that it's nothing to do with us or that it does not affect us, because in truth it does. Dunn's poem goes on to say, Any man's death diminishes me, because I am involved in mankind, and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. Or let us cross the Atlantic and take up the words from Emma Lazarus's famous 1883 sonnet, The New Colossus. Her sonnet was written at a time when 19th century US immigration policy and European colonialism collided, and the words of the sonnet can be found inscribed on the Statue of Liberty. And it's the closing lines of the sonnet that are the best known. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Last Sunday, the Right Honourable Gordon Brown gave an online lecture entitled Justice and Hope. This special event was to mark the launch of a new initiative within the life of the Methodist Church, the Walking with Micah project. We live at a time of huge change when domestic and global injustices are being revealed and intensified. How can our world be renewed so that all God's creation, people and planet can flourish? Gordon Brown argued that change is possible and that people of faith have a crucial role to play and early on in his lecture, Gordon Brown, Gordon Brown paid tribute to Methodism's long history of justice, dignity and solidarity throughout the centuries, often being at the forefront and the vanguard of activism and social change. The prophet Micah reminded people that the worship God wants is for us to act justly, to love as God loves and to walk humbly with God. Justice seeking has always been integral to our relationship with God and interconnected with our worship. Introducing Gordon Brown at the start of the event, Jonathan Hustler, the Secretary of the Methodist Conference, reminds us that every life has value, something which we see so clearly reflected in the life and teaching of Jesus. And we must never forget that Jesus himself was a refugee, the one who we seek to serve, and whose name we claim for ourselves, knows what it's like to be displaced, to be other. We recognise that Jesus himself was a refugee. But being a refugee wasn't just about his early life, fleeing from King Herod, crossing borders, being an alien in a strange land and finding sanctuary in Egypt. For the impact was far deeper than simply, this is what happened to me. This is part of my story, for the legacy of being a refugee informed Jesus' teaching. When he set off on his mission, he took up the life of a displaced person with nowhere to lay his head. We see this in Matthew chapter 8 and Luke chapter 9. He asked those who acted for him to go out without a bag or a change of clothing, essentially to walk along the road like a destitute refugee who has suddenly fled relying on the generosity and hospitality of ordinary people 
whose villages they entered. Mark chapter 6, Matthew chapter 10, Luke chapter 9. The theme of Refugee Week 2021 is We Cannot Walk Alone. Behind that slogan is an invitation to extend our hands to someone new. Someone who is outside our current circle, has had an experience we haven't, or is fighting for a cause we aren't yet involved in. Refugee Week is also a festival celebrating the contributions, creativity and resilience of refugees and people seeking sanctuary. It seeks to make us aware of the positive contributions refugees make and how why Dunn's truth of how any man's death diminishes me. It, also, it is also true that we are enriched and benefit from what we learn from others. Refugee Week suggests that people try and take part in some of the eight simple actions that they mention, one of which is to sing a song. Lamin, a musician and former detainee, explains that when your body is trapped, music can set the mind free. It's like the music plays and those walls come down. You feel free, even if only for a while. We are being invited to tune in to the Refugee Week 2021 Spotify playlist to discover a special selection of songs inspired by refugees and the theme, We Cannot Walk Alone for us to sing along to and share. The other simple actions include watch a film, have a chat, read a book, say it loud, play a game, walk together and join the movement. Just search for Refugee Week online for plenty of ideas and further information. Refugee Refugee Week reminds us of our interconnectedness and we cannot turn our back on the plight of those fleeing and seeking a new life and shelter. To act justly, to love as God loves, and to walk humbly with him is what we're being called to do. And we do so as we seek to tread in the footsteps of the one who himself was a refugee, seen as other, and yet who gave his life for all. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, whose son became a refugee and had no place to call his own, look with mercy on those who today are fleeing from danger, who are homeless and hungry. Bless those who work to bring them relief, inspire generosity and compassion in all our hearts, and guide the nations of the world towards that day when all will rejoice in your kingdom of justice and of peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of family, we bring before you the parents who are weeping and lamenting, who are waiting for their children, whose trace is lost in the sea, in the desert, on railway tracks, in shipping containers and uncertainty. Men, women and children who had escaped from the war zones the famine and poverty of this world, with the hope for a better, safer life. God of life, we bring before you our lament for the dead, stranded at the borders of safety, who died fleeing through deserts over mountains and seas. We call to you and join in the cry of all those who sought justice and a better life for themselves and their children and perished in the process. God of justice, we bring before you political leaders, advisers and decision makers who hold the fate of others in their hands. Make them aware of the causes of migration and flight. Keep their consciences alive so that refugees are offered protection and dignity. Let them agree rules of residence that are based on human rights and guided by solidarity and compassion. God of peace. Give us the strength to be witnesses of the suffering of the world and fill us with the fire of your spirit to renew our efforts to serve those in need and give us the grace to welcome, learn about and share our lives with people who come to live in our communities. Amen. We say together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, I was hungry and you gave me food. Made in the image of God, we see the face of Christ in all. Jesus said, I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. Made in the image of God, we see the face of Christ in all. Jesus said, I was a stranger and made in the image of God, we see the face of Christ in all. Jesus said, I was naked and you gave me clothing. Made in the image of God, we see the face of Christ in all. Jesus said, I was sick and you took care of me. Made in the image of God, we see the face of Christ in all. Jesus said, I was in prison and you visited me. Made in the image of God, we see the face of Christ in all. Jesus said, Inasmuch as you did to one of these, considered to be the least important, you did it to me. Made in the image of God, we see the face of Christ in all. And so we go from here to see and serve Christ in all. Amen.